Hey everybody, thanks again for joining me for The Truth That Transforms, 10 Minutes to Live By. As always, I hope that uh, these series of teachings and inspirational talks are uplifting and encouraging. And uh, I appreciate those of you that benefit and are blessed from them and drop me a line. Uh, continue to do so and pray for us that God's will might be done. For the next few minutes, I want to share with you a very, very, very important uh, message today. Uh, time will not allow me to do justice to this subject, but I kind of want to sow a seed. And if you will meditate on it, pray, study, and let the Holy Spirit talk to you. I'm sure that this subject will uh, do much to help you in your growth and to help us to live a life free from the burdens and encumbrances uh, that we have to deal with. If you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew uh, chapter 6. It's the Sermon on the Mount. We're looking particularly at uh, the portion where Jesus talks about prayer. He's instructing his disciples on how to pray, and he's basically saying to them, when you pray, uh, God already knows what you need, so that prayer is not to inform God, it is really to transform us. Another thing he says is, uh, prayer, it is not necessary when you pray to have volume or to have verbiage. A whole lot of people think that if we pray loud and holler, that somehow that makes us more uh, more spiritual and God hears us. And others think if they use long sentences with big words, that somehow makes them uh, closer to God. But the Lord says to the disciples, you don't need to do that. He says, I already know what you need. And the real basis of prayer is to form a relationship with God. It's a dialogue and not a monologue. And so in this portion of scripture, Jesus turns his attention, his teaching, and the disciples' attention to the subject of prayer. And I don't want to discuss the whole thing because time won't allow, but what I want to focus in on is something that has always, always arrested me and gotten my attention. And for years I read it and prayed and studied and asked God about it. Uh, and over these years, God has given me progressive clarity. And I just want to share something with you. We all know the Lord's Prayer. Uh, in fact, we won't even read it. Let's just repeat it. Why don't you say it with me? He says, and when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now listen. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know if you recited that prayer with me, uh, and even if you didn't, you know that prayer. It's one of the first scriptures that we're taught as children. That and you know, the 23rd Psalm. But what draws my attention is that in this list, uh, Jesus is not telling us to pray these words exactly. Those who understand uh, teaching in the Jewish religion uh, knows that often the rabbi uh, would give a topical uh, series uh, of statements and then he would go back after he gives those statements topical statements, and he would expound on each of those statements. So what Jesus is doing here is giving us topical statements of subjects that ought to be included in our prayer life. Some years ago, uh, Dr. Larry Lee of Church of the Rock on, uh, in Rockwall, Texas, uh, became very popular with a series called Could You Not Tarry uh, One Hour. In that series, he broke this prayer down into a very neat outline, an alliterative outline. Uh, and that was very helpful to me and to many others who read it. Uh, but what I want to pull out here is notice that in giving these topics, verse 12, Jesus says, 
When you pray, say, forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. That's just one topic in basically six topics that Jesus gives us to include in our prayer life. But it's interesting that out of all of these topics, he talks about praying with a recognition of God's paternity, our Father. Uh, praying with a recognition uh, of God's will, your kingdom come. Praying with a recognition of God's ability to provide, give us this day. And then he talks about praying with a recognition that we need God's pardon, forgive us of our debts. But as he concludes this prayer, verse 14, of all the subjects he could have returned to, he returns to the subject of forgiveness. And listen to what he says. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I wanted to take a moment and just share with you this subject, let it go. All of us have had evil things done to us. All of us have sinned and offended others. But all of us have offended God. Listen to what the Lord says, my brothers and sisters. He says, when people have done wrong to you, Forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, God won't forgive you. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus gives a parable which describes why it is so important for us to let it go. No matter who has done anything to you and no matter what they have done, today, right now, is a time for you to let it go. Jesus said, a man owed his master millions of dollars, Matthew chapter 18. And his master called him in and said, I need you to pay. The man had no way of paying. He, he had no way of paying this debt. And so he pleaded for the mercy of his master. Jesus goes on in the parable and says, the master because he had mercy on this man, forgave him of millions of dollars worth of debt. As a result of this man now being released and freed, he goes out and he finds someone who owes him, but not millions of dollars, but owes him just a few dollars. But rather than treat that man like his master treated him and forgive him of the debt and cancel it and let him go. The Bible says he grabbed this man by the throat and commanded him to pay him his debt. And if he couldn't pay it, to be thrown into debtor's prison until he paid it. Notice how this man who had been forgiven by his master of millions of dollars now refuses to forgive someone who owes him a few dollars. Jesus is making a parallel here. He's making a parallel in the fact that no matter who has done anything to us, compared to what we've done to God, we've done millions of dollars worth of damage to God. And no matter who's done anything to us, comparatively, it's just a few dollars. The master got wind of the fact that the man he had forgiven refused to forgive. So he called him in. And he said, why didn't you, and he calls him a wicked and unmerciful servant. He said, why didn't you treat your debtor like I treated you? And he said, because he didn't do that. Here's what I want you to get, brothers and sisters. Because he did not forgive like his master forgave him. His master said, I'm turning you over. One version says to the tormentors until you have paid every penny. Turning you over 
to the tormentors. That's what happens to every one of us when we fail to forgive our brothers and sisters. I don't care what the offense is. I don't care what they've done. The Lord says, let it go. Because when you harbor that offense, it doesn't destroy the other person. It destroys you. It eats away on the inside like a cancer. And so the Lord sent me to tell you today, just like when we ask forgiveness from God, he let it go. It's time for you to let it go. Who is it? What have they done? How long has it been? How long have you been carrying that grudge, that anger, that animosity? You can be free today if you let it go. Forgive. And don't be like people who say, I can forgive, but I can't forget. God never told you you'd forget. We can't forget the things that have happened to us. But what we can do is do like God. The word forgive is a fiamai. It means to send away. God says, I'll throw your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. I'll remember them no more. As far as the east is from the west is as far as God has separated our sins from us. And I want to share with you today, it's time to be free. Send it away. Whether it's your husband, your wife, your children, your friends, no matter who it is. Forgive them. Let it go, because your freedom is connected to their forgiveness. God bless you today.